primary are, are you in a good place I think we are in a good place so I think any candidate who says he's where he wants to be needs to be telling you that the day after the election <laughs> you know and not a year before uh, but we're very pleased with where we are uh, there were three markers we had at the beginning of this year uh, Marker one was, would we do a good job of moving around the state and developing a message and honing our message? Um, and I think we've done very well on that front. I think we've had a clear, consistent message uh, on the prospective and not retrospective nature of this campaign. I think we've had a very clear message on three important issues. Uh, we've got to expand and diversify our job base in Alabama. The states that grow coming out of this recession are going to be the states that have more diverse job bases and more diverse workforces in terms of what their workers can do and the kinds of jobs that are accessible in the community. Uh, we've also got to dramatically strengthen our commitment to public education in Alabama. Uh, we have made strides in the last decade in public education, but we're nowhere near where we need to be. And along those lines, we're not where we need to be on the higher education front either. Uh, we've cut funding for higher education by 20% in the last year. Uh, we are ranked 49th in the country when it comes to accessibility of colleges. And as you all have chronicled better than, frankly, any other news organization in the state, uh, the PAC debacle uh, is nothing short of shameful because it's a broken promise to 48,000 families around the state. Uh, and uh, third of all, we've got to build a stronger culture for political reform in Alabama. That means, among other things, a stronger uh, playing field when it comes to ethics. It also means that Alabama politics has got to be more accessible than it's been. Uh, uh, and while the various groups who dominate Alabama politics, the various special interests, have every right to be at the table, they don't have the right to have exclusive seats at the table. Um, they don't have the right to have the conversation happen around a table that's smaller than one I'm sitting at right now. Um, so on the first front, honing our message and driving our message home, uh, we think we've done well. Second of all, uh, frankly, the political dynamic has worked out well for us. Jim Folsom would have been a very strong opponent in the governor's race. Uh, he had a base of name recognition all over the state. Uh, he had a fundraising base all over the state, and he had a network of people who were assuming he would run for governor and who were preparing to back him. Those people were activated and ready to go. And all he had to do was press the on button, and he would have had a very powerful campaign assembled around him. Uh, as I've been making fundraising calls today, as I've been making calls to just solicit support over the last several months, uh, frankly, we've encountered a lot of people you know, who said that we're in a position to take this call now. We were in a position to take this call a few months ago uh, because we had loyalties to the lieutenant governor. Uh, the other aspect of that is that Jim Folsom's running for lieutenant governor guarantees that whoever is the candidate for governor, uh, that person's going to have a very strong first officer sitting next to the captain's chair. And uh, I saw Star Trek recently, so that's what I'm thinking of those terms. Uh, but it creates a very strong second candidate uh, and uh, I believe the next governor of Alabama is going to be a Democrat, whichever one of us happens to be, will have a very strong co-pilot in Jim Folsom. Uh, so that's been a positive event. We've been guaranteed a very strong number two and a very good partner for governing after we win the election and has frankly opened up some political fronts in Alabama. Third of all, um, candidly, the Republican Party is not in very good shape. Uh, if, if you'd said a year ago, it's fun to watch, though. Well, it, it, it got more fun today, uh, <laughs> you know. But if you uh, had said a year ago that there would not be a strong Republican front runner, and if you'd said a year ago the Republican Party ID in Alabama would be behind Democratic Party ID in most surveys, uh, that would not have been well believed. A year ago. Uh, summer of 2008, we were showing a 12-point preference on the generic ballot for Republican being governor of the state. Uh, now what most polls are showing is that more Alabama voters think of themselves as Democrats than Republicans, and it's carrying over even how we think about national politics. Right now, candidly, Barack Obama is almost as popular as uh, Bob Riley in Alabama. Now, I know if you print that, it will guarantee I will be inundated on the blogs and attacked for making that statement. Maybe not on your blog, but somebody else's. So I know it says red meat to somebody, but it's absolutely what the polls are showing now. Right now, 
Barack Obama's approval rating is in the low to mid 50s in Alabama, and Bob Riley's is around the mid 50s. You know, so today Obama and Riley are frankly comparable in terms of popularity. Uh, a year ago, frankly, uh, there was a very strong feeling that running as a Democrat was going to be an albatross in the governor's race in 2010. Uh, candidly, I don't think that today. So we've done, I think, a good job getting our message out. We had a very strong potential opponent remove himself and shift <clears> over, <throat> becoming a very strong potential running mate. And the Republican Party is not in a strong position. And President Obama's gotten a lot more popular here. So it's been, in our opinion, a very good six months.